Hi everyone, I hope you are doing well. So today a cool tutorial to show you how to create beautiful and unique color explosion with Typhlo and Phoenix FD. I will show you too how to create different setup with Typhlo to mix color based on RGB in Phoenix. We will also see how to use the re-simulation setting to add extreme detail and improve the resolution which will allow us to save a lot of time in the simulation of the smoke. As always, all these projects are available on my Patreon. Ok, let's go. Ok, so first I'm going to create a Typhlo setup and in helper, type flow, a tie icon in the center. I change the shape to a sphere and I set the diameter to 1. Now I open the type flow editor and I'm going to create a burst, 0 and 0, and the position icon. I cannot pick the tie icon, I change the geometry to display and I will know the shape to see the particles. I will just select a geosphere lower rays from my shape. Now we see better the particle we need to create the explosion, so I will add a speed operator. Ok, now we start to see the explosion with a random 3D for the direction. I can set the magnitude to 2 to increase the velocity of the particles. I will just decrease the size of my particles and change the color to white to see better what I do. Ok, so we have the explosion. I can go back to the speed operator and play with the divergence with the variation too. This is the way to create a classic and uniform explosion, but uh, we want something more interesting maybe. So I go back to the burst and I set a low value for my total. You can go back to speed and change the seed to really create different unique look. This method with a low number of particles is really cool if you want to create smoke trails, but what we want is a mix of a big explosion and a lot of smoke trails. So to create this, I will add a spawn operator. I copy the shape and the display. I change the color and I link the spawn to the second event. We see that we created each time a red particle on the white particle. We can see it better just by deactivating the display for the event 1 or for the event 2. I can now just add a speed operator to the second event and change the operation to add to velocity so it will add the velocity based on the first speed. If I set the value to 0.1, we see that the particle moves slowly next to the original particle. I can go back to spawn, increase the offspring to multiply the number of the red particles. Lower the spawn if you want some randomness. Play with the variation too. Go back to the speed, up the magnitude if you want to separate more the particles inside the clusters. Maybe 0.25 can be good. You can also add a spread operator to add again more randomness and uh, have precise control on your simulation. Maybe like this. Yes, it's good. Just adjust the simulation as you like. You can of course go back to the uniqueness in the first speed and play with the seed to randomly create a different explosion. Okay, perfect. And now what we want to do is to delete the particle after a certain number of frames, so I will create a time test operator. Set the value maybe to 20. And link this time test to a delete operator. And now we see that the red particle are deleted after the frame 20 with a variation of 3 frames. We just have now to copy this time test to the first event and link it to the delete. We can now see that we have our explosion. You can increase if you want the speed, but my advice for you is to not increase too much because it will be more complicated after for Phoenix. You will have to increase the number of paths. It's better in my opinion to increase after the speed in post-production. Ok, now you just have to play with all these settings to create the explosion you want and once you are satisfied you can go to Phoenix to generate the smoke explosion. Ok, so I have here my Typhoon explosion and I'm going to create my grade. So, Phoenix FD. Phoenix FD Fire and I create my grind box. I just adjust the size of my grind in the grind tab and I move it to work properly my type of explosion. I think it's good like this. 
I said the adaptive gray to smoke and the extra margin to four to avoid collision problem when the grid will grow. I don't need gravity. I change nothing. I just increase the quality to have a good smoke conservation. For the output, I don't need temperature. I select smoke, RGB for the color, wavelet and velocity that will be essential to create after the re simulation. You can choose the path you want for the export. And to finish, I activate the GPU preview. OK, now I'm going to create a Phoenix source. So helper, Phoenix, and Phoenix source here. I don't need temperature. I don't touch to the outgoing velocity for the moment. I will only pick the type loss setup for the emitter and now I will launch a simulation to see what happens. And nothing happened. It's because you need to go to type flow and interface enable particle interface. I cannot just relaunch a simulation and we see the smoke created by the particles. So it could be a good effect for our smoke trails, but it's not what we want for this effect. I can just go back to Typhlo and disable all the display if I just want to see the smoke and not the particles. Now what you can do is just go back to the source and increase the velocity. Maybe 100. So we see that we have more smoke emit from the particles but not the explosion we want. I will just maybe decrease this value. 40. And the solution to create this massive explosion on the beginning is to play with the noise effect. So I set a value to 5 and for the frame 10, a value to 0. I have now a little animation for the noise value. I can also increase the smoke to 2. Activate RGB to use this color later. Maybe a yellow. And relaunch. And now we see a beautiful explosion at the beginning and after the smoke trails. If you want, you can uh, add a little turbulence with the Phoenix turbulence effect. Maybe a size to 40 and a strength to 7. Before running again the simulation, I will just uh, up the cell size to run faster the simulation. And I launch. And as you can see, we have the simulation with a little turbulence on the smoke. And after the frame 20 and the delete of the particle, the smoke stops its acceleration. OK, once you have a middle resolution simulation that you like, it's time to add more detail and a better resolution. So what I'm going to do is to go to the resimulation tab. We have here particle resimulation, but uh, we will not use it because it will totally change the look of our simulation and it's not what we want. So I just enable grid resimulation. You have here three important settings. Amp resolution to increase the resolution, the method of wavelet to add detail, and the strength of this wavelet. For the strength, the 0 0.5 will be good, I think. I don't want extreme detail on the smoke, but you can up if you want. I don't touch to wavelet nice. And for the resolution, I think uh, 0 0.7 can be enough. The last thing to do to have beautiful trails, and because the smoke moves fast, is to increase the step by frame. I think 3 will be good. And now I can launch the simulation. Of course, it's not real time. The simulation took less than 5 minutes for 20 frames, so it's really fast. It's why I always use the resimulation. And now we see that we have a more beautiful and detailed simulation. You can see the difference just by enabling the grid resimulation, and we really see that it's the same simulation but with better resolution and detail. OK, once you are satisfied with your smoke simulation, it's time to render that. So I just create a Vero camera, set the ratio and resolution I want, and I create a simple rear plane above my smoke. And if you use a Vero GPU for the render engine, don't forget to go to setting and select full light evaluation. It will render your smoke faster. Now I can launch a render to see my smoke. I activate IPR and I zoom in a little. 
You can go to the rendering in the volumetric option to adjust your smoke render. You can of course change the color. You can select RGB that will use the RGB color set in the Phoenix source. You can, if you want, go to the smoke opacity and increase or decrease the opacity. Maybe try 1. It's too much. Maybe 0.4 can be good. You can play with the external scatter if you want to let the light pass or not. Maybe I will just change the color to a beautiful purple and render. Oh, I forget to select constant color and not RGB. Maybe decrease the light and relaunch. And we have a beautiful color smoke. Maybe play again with the scatter to have more shadow if you want. It's really up to you to adjust the setting to have the look you want for your final render. Okay, now I will show you how to mix RGB to have different colors inside your smoke simulation. To do that, I go back to my Typho setup. I reactivate all the display. I have here my animation. I set all the colors to white to have one color for this setup. And I'm going to create another Typho setup. I copy the setup of the Typho 1 and passed in the Typho 2. I change all the color of this second type flow to have two type flow with the same setting but with two different colors. I can now go to my speed and change the seed. Maybe like this and decrease the total of particles for the two setup. Maybe 10 particles. Okay, perfect. Now we can see the animation with the two different setup. Of course, don't forget to go to the setting of the second type flow setup and activate enable particle interface. Ok, I can now close type flow. Now what I'm going to do is just clone the phoenix source. Select the second source and pick the second type flow. And now I just have to choose two different colors for each phoenix source. I can now just activate again all the display to see only my smoke and after run a first mid resolution simulation and a re-simulation to improve the detail and quality of the smoke. Ok guys, it's over for this tutorial, don't forget to try and use the re-simulation if you want to create beautiful smoke, it's a really cool powerful setting. I hope you learned a lot of things, don't forget to thumb up and subscribe if you like my work, and you can follow me on Instagram and support me on Patreon if you want. See you soon for our next tutorial guys, bye!